We're gonna be a 1K, a 1K map, and we're gonna fill it with features that, that works with you or against you. We cannot script it down to the last nut and bolt. It has to be kept to a certain amount flexible to encourage the player to have emergent gameplay come to the fore. It's less about running around killing enemies. It's more about like working as a team, taking the environment into account, playing with the environment. It's really about tactical gameplay. What I've built here is they, they can take cover behind this car. Now we have this window, so that means if the team members are sitting here, they can open up the shutters and then shoot, try to shoot you. So there's a ladder that you can climb up and then try to really run around here so that you can also enter this building and then try to kill the enemy. Everything has to make sense. So let's say if you see a door or a gap where you can jump through in a distance, there is definitely a challenge behind it or in front of it. We have these barricaded doors, right? So this means that you can only open up from the interior. But now we have little holes in the wall, so that means you can shoot the lock from, from behind, so it will open up. But if you shoot, it makes noise. Or what you can do is actually you can try to explore the world and then get this sledgehammer or, or a wooden axe and then try to break through it. We allow you to explore freely. The only thing we can do is we can set the cornerstones. We can give you variables and then depending on how you change them, other things will be affected by it. It's a very sandbox environment. It's very dynamic. Something we really, really felt worked well, especially when we were playtesting, was that if you do something in the level and you can give yourself away, that was a really interesting dynamic when people were playing. They would listen out for other players nearby and gunshots or glass being trodden on. Oh, be careful, there are like enemies below us. I call it like player awareness feature. It's like I'm standing here and I'm listening and I'm looking at the world and what does the world tell me? How you deal with that challenge will reveal or hide your position to other players, right? And we have a lot of those things. Once you open up this gate, you will see all the uh, ravens actually take off. So this already gives a clue to guys inside here. So we'll see all the ravens just flying away and they also make noise. And then we have these caged dogs, they will start barking. This means there are definitely someone there that can come and kill us. We don't have these scripted events, jump scare moments. So uh, it can happen that you open up a door and there is a zombie behind it and then it, get, it attacks you. And the next one, you open up the door, there's no one inside. It won't be played the same way twice. It, the things are randomized. We randomize the clue positions, we randomize target positions. Um, the AI combinations will be different. The location of the AI spawns will be different. We have a lot of situations where we don't want players to be able to see what's necessarily around the corner. We want them to slow down and think what's to come, what AI, what monster is in that building and, and whatnot. If, if you enter a room, you try to not show everything at once um, because you can then immediately see if there's something in it or not. So we put cloth in between, we put broken furniture and rubble piles in the corners to create as much mystery as possible. What made this company is open world, sandbox, you're walking around in a cool environment and you're approaching compounds and you're doing this in crisis, right? And if you take a look at Hunt, you are in an open world, in a sandbox world, you're moving around compounds, you're trying to infiltrate them, you have some special powers and stuff like this, a lot of gunplay, first person shooter. Uh, this is why we're doing this game too, I'm playing in the strength of what we know. Achieved with CryEngine.